All right, so now we want to start talking about uh, the even and odd properties of the trig functions. So uh, remember from pre-calculus, uh, a function f of x is called an even function if f of negative x equals f of x for all x in the domain of f. So um, we haven't talked about domains of trig functions yet, but we'll talk about that later when we talk about graphs. So don't worry too much about that. Um, we, we do want to be careful of this little detail here. So uh, keep that in mind for sure. But just remember, um, so what's an even function uh, look like? Remember, even functions are symmetric over the y-axis, right? So um, an even function would be something like y equals x squared. So y equals x squared, uh, things like that. That would be even. So that's x-axis, y-axis. That's an even function example. Um, and remember, f of negative x equals f of x for all x in the domain of f. So if f of x equals x squared, uh, what is f of negative x? Well, f of negative x is just negative x quantity squared. But that's just negative x times negative x, right? Um, so that's just the negatives cancel, basically, because you have a negative times a negative, so it becomes positive, and you just end up with x squared, which is just f of x. Okay. So that's why uh, x squared is an even function, because f of negative x equals f of x, no matter what x is. Okay. So that's uh, an even function. And remember, uh, an odd function, this is also a pre-calculus thing, an odd function is uh, f of x is an odd function if f of negative x equals negative f of x for all x in the domain of f. Okay, so the only difference here between even and odd is this negative sign here that does not appear over here. Okay, so another way of phrasing this one is uh, you put the negative sign over here. So some people say if negative f of negative x equals f of x, um, it's the same thing. But it's going to be more useful to us like this for now. But either way, it's the same thing. So what does an odd function look like? So, so this is an even function over here. And an odd function, um, so even functions are symmetric over the y-axis. Odd functions are symmetric over the origin. So some people are inclined to say over the x-axis, but if you're symmetric over the x-axis, then you're not a function because you fail the vertical line test. Okay? But if uh, you're an odd function, um, then you're symmetric over the uh, origin, which is kind of a weird thing. But symmetric over the origin means uh, reflect over the y-axis and then reflect over the x-axis. You get a mirror image that way. Okay? So if we were to fold this over and then fold it down over like that, um, we would get this piece here. So if take this piece, fold it, fold it again, we get that piece. Okay. So something like uh, y equals x cubed, that's an example of an odd function. So why is that? Uh, so what if we say, okay, f of x equals x cubed. Let's take a look at f of negative x. Well, f of negative x is uh, negative x quantity cubed, okay, which is negative x times negative x times negative x. Okay. So negative, 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 three negatives make a negative, okay? and then x, x, x makes x cubed. So what we have is negative x cubed like that, but that's just the same thing as uh, negative f of x. Okay. So in other words, f of negative x equals negative f of x, f of negative x equals negative f of x. So that's why x cubed is an example of an odd function. Okay. okay, so that's a quick recap of even and odd functions. Again, that's just a pre-calculus thing. Um, so now we want to see uh, which trig functions are even and which trig functions are odd, if any are at all. It turns out uh, all six of them are one or the other, which is nice. That's great. Um, useful for evaluating things later on. So let's figure out why, um, why and how. So let's draw a unit circle here. Uh, okay, so x-axis, y-axis. So to keep things simple, we'll toss a unit circle into here. So here's our unit circle. Ah, I almost had it. Could have been better. All right, um, let's see. So let's put an angle uh, theta up here. Okay, so this would be the point x comma y. Here's our angle theta. Let's zoom in on that. Here's theta. Okay. Now, um, so remember theta, it's uh, opening up this way, right? Theta's opening up that way. And here is our initial side. Here's our initial side. Because theta is in standard position, so vertex at the origin, initial side, positive x-axis. So uh, since this is a unit circle, okay, this is a unit circle, so what is the cosine of theta? Cosine of theta is just x, right? Remember, cosine of theta is the x-coordinate, sine of theta is the y-coordinate. So we talked about that a few videos ago. Okay. Sine of theta is the y-coordinate. So we want to know, what about cosine of negative theta? What about sine of negative theta? So let's write that down. What about uh, cosine, cosine of negative theta equals question mark? Sine of negative theta equals question mark. Okay. 
Let's uh, make that a little bit prettier. Okay. So cosine of negative theta is what? Sine of negative theta is what? Well, how are we going to figure that out? Well, let's take a look over here. If theta is this angle, so let's zoom in on this. Okay, if theta is this angle, what's negative theta? Well, remember, uh, positive angles open up counterclockwise. Negative angles open up clockwise. So if theta is this angle here, then negative theta is going to have the same size, but in the clockwise direction. So negative theta is going to be down like this. Okay? Negative theta is going to be down here like this. So this here is uh, negative theta. Okay? And what's this point here? That was pretty bad the way I drew it, but um, I really wish I could drew that better. Anyway, so if this is a theta, this is negative theta, um, what is this point right here going to be? Well, since these two angles have the same size, just in different directions, okay, this is the positive direction, negative direction, but they have the same size, okay, so for example, this could be like 45 degrees, this would be negative 45 degrees, or this could be uh, 37 degrees, negative 37 degrees, so the exact same size, just in opposite directions, um, then these two points are going to be reflections of each other over the x-axis, okay? So this will be x comma negative y. Okay, remember, we talked about this a lot when we talked about uh, filling in the unit circle uh, several videos ago. So if you reflect over the x-axis, your x-coordinate stays the same, the y-coordinate becomes negative, okay, or it gets multiplied by negative 1, we'll say that. So x comma y becomes x comma negative y, okay? So uh, here's theta, here's negative theta. So this is still the unit circle, these are still points on the unit circle, so what's cosine of negative theta? Well, cosine of negative theta is the x-coordinate corresponding to that point. Uh, what's the x-coordinate is still just x, okay, just x. What's the sine of negative theta? The sine of negative theta, again, it's still, it's just a point on the unit circle, so the sine of negative theta is the y-coordinate, okay, and uh, what's the y-coordinate? It's negative y. Okay, so again, uh, start with this angle theta. We want to know what's the cosine and sine of negative theta. So what we do is we take this angle theta, and then we use that to draw negative theta. So negative theta is just the same size angle in the negative direction. Okay? And because they have the same size, then these two points are reflections of each other over the x-axis. Okay? That's just how that works. Uh, it's just a geometric property. Uh, same size, same size, reflections of each other over the x-axis. And when you reflect over the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same, the y-coordinate gets multiplied by negative 1, and then we can just forget about this up here and then just look at this. Okay, well we have an angle associated with this point on the unit circle, so the cosine of the angle is the x-coordinate, the sine of the angle is the y-coordinate. Okay, the x-coordinate is just x, the y-coordinate is negative y. Okay, so how does that relate back to up here? Well, notice uh, x is the same thing as cosine of theta. Okay, so actually what we see then, let's zoom out a bit so we have more room, so what we just uh, what we have just seen here is cosine of negative theta equals uh, x. Okay, that's what we just saw here. Cosine of negative theta equals x. But what is x? X is the cosine of theta. Okay. Also, what else did we just see? We just saw that sine of negative theta equals uh, negative y. Okay, What's negative y? Well, y is the sine of theta, so negative y is negative sine of theta. Okay. So, in other words, cosine of negative theta equals the cosine of theta. Sine of negative theta equals negative sine of theta. So what does that mean about cosine and sine? Well, f of negative x equals f of x, that's an even function. Cosine of negative theta equals cosine of theta, that's an even function f of negative x equals negative f of x. That's an odd function. Sine of negative theta equals negative sine of theta. That's an odd function. So cosine is even, sine is odd. Um, now I want to point out, yeah, we drew theta in the first quadrant, but it doesn't actually matter if we had theta over here or down here or somewhere down here. Um, no matter where we put theta, this exact same logic would apply. Okay, you just call the point x comma y, and yeah, x would be negative over here, but it doesn't matter at all because you still reflect over the x-axis and so on and so forth. Um, the exact same reasoning applies. Uh, if you want to fill in the details, I'll leave that to you. If you have trouble, if you have any questions, of course, please let me know. Um, but anyway, it's going to be the exact same reasoning. Just uh, take the negative angle, same size, different direction, the opposite direction, and just reflect the point over the x-axis. Um, and you'll just have the exact same reasoning, the exact same thing will hold true. Okay. So that's cosine and sine. So cosine is even, sine is odd. What about the other four trick functions? Well, let's uh, zoom out a little more. 
Okay, so we'll talk about the other four trig functions, then we'll do a couple examples uh, that use these properties to, uh, using these properties to evaluate trig functions. So, um, let's see, tangent, okay, the tangent of negative theta equals uh, what? Well, the tangent of negative theta is the sine of negative theta divided by the cosine of negative theta, right? So remember, tangent of a thing is just sine of that thing divided by cosine of that thing, whether it's theta or negative theta or 200 theta or 76 plus, I don't know, 5 theta. It doesn't matter what's inside of here as long as these three things are the same. Tangent is sine divided by the cosine um, as long as these three things are the same in here, okay? Well, what is the sine of negative theta? We just found out that's negative sine of theta. Um, and what's the cosine of negative theta? We just found out that that's the cosine of theta. Okay? That's the cosine of theta. Okay. So how does this simplify? Well, negative sine of theta, cosine of theta, we can pull the negative off, and then we'll have negative sine of theta over cosine of theta like that. But uh, what's that? Well, sine divided by cosine is just tangent, so this is actually just negative tangent of theta. Okay? So tangent of negative theta equals negative tangent of theta. What kind of function is that? f of negative x equals negative f of x, tangent of negative theta equals negative tangent of theta. That's an odd function. Okay, so tangent and sine are both odd. Okay, so what about um, the other three? So the other three will be a little bit easier. Um, secant, cosecant, and cotangent will be a little bit simpler than uh, these three here. So, well now that we have these three, um, it's, pretty, it's gonna be pretty much straightforward. So let's just keep in mind uh, cosine was even, sine is odd, tangent is odd. So how about secant? Secant of theta equals uh, one divided by cosine of theta, right? So remember that. So what about uh, the secant of negative theta? So that's what we want to find out about now. Kind of running out of colors here. Secant of negative theta equals one divided by the cosine of negative theta. Okay. And we found out earlier that cosine of negative theta is the same thing as cosine of theta. Okay. And what is 1 over cosine of theta? It's just secant of theta. Okay, so secant of negative theta equals secant of theta. f of negative x equals f of x. That's an even function. So secant is also even. Okay. Um, how about cosecant? Well, cosecant of negative theta. Well, first of all, remember that uh, cosecant of theta is 1 over sine of theta, right? So cosecant of negative theta is 1 over sine of negative theta. And remember, sine is an odd function, so we found that out earlier. Sine of negative theta is the same thing as negative sine of theta. Okay? So the negative's on the bottom in the denominator here, but we can pull that out and just say negative 1 of sine theta. Okay, we can pull it off of the denominator and out in front of like this. But what is that? That's negative... Uh, cosecant theta, right? 1 over sine, 1 over sine of theta is just cosecant of theta, and we have a minus sign tacked on in front of it. So cosecant of negative theta equals negative cosecant of theta. f of negative x equals negative f of x. That's an odd function. Okay. Again, I want to point out that we do have domain restrictions, but um, we haven't talked about the domains of the trig functions, so we'll talk about them when we get to the graph, so don't worry about those. Um, no trick questions here at this point. So uh, cosecant of negative theta equals negative cosecant of theta. And then lastly, uh, let's talk about the cotangent. So cotangent of theta, let's do cotangent of negative theta. So cotangent of negative theta, well remember cotangent of theta is 1 over the tangent of theta, right? So cotangent of theta is 1 over the tangent of theta, so we can say the same thing with negative theta. So, uh, and remember, tangent was an odd function, so tangent of negative theta is the same thing as negative tangent of theta. Okay. So then, uh, totally running out of room here, so let's get rid of these. Big old cramped mess in here. So, uh, 1 over negative tangent of theta, so that's uh, negative, oops. So that's negative 1 over tangent of theta like that. So again, uh, minus sign in the denominator, we can pull it off out in front like this. So, uh, negative 1 over tangent of theta. Well, 1 over tangent is the cotangent, so we have negative cotangent of theta. Okay? So uh, cotangent of negative theta equals negative cotangent of theta.
f of negative x equals negative f of x. That's an odd function. Okay? So cotangent is odd. So what we found out here was I erased a lot of it, but um, if you were following along, you'll still have it written down. But what we found out was that two of the trig functions are even, and the other four are odd. Okay, so let's write that down. We'll summarize that. So uh, even trig functions, so even, um, and odd. Okay, so cosine of theta and uh, secant of theta are even. Okay? And the other four are odd. Uh, sine of theta, cosecant of theta, and uh, tan of theta, and cotangent of theta. Okay? And remember, uh, the reason is, so just keep in mind that cosecant and secant are even, sine, cosecant, uh, tangent, and cotangent are odd, and just keep in mind what that means. That just means that cosine of negative theta equals cosine of theta, secant of negative theta equals secant of theta. So I know it might seem kind of weird that you could just drop the minus sign and just totally forget about it, but that really is how even functions work. Uh, it is very nice. Um, and then for these other four, it's a little bit different. So for the other four, it's uh, sine of negative theta equals negative sine of theta. Okay, so it looks like we're pulling the minus sign out, but you really don't want to think of it like that because that's technically not what's really happening behind the scenes. Kind of, you just you want to be careful because we're not really factoring or pulling anything out. It's not really what's happening, um, even though it might look like that, and it might be easy to think of it like that. It's kind of dangerous to think of it like that because it's just not um, not what's happening there. Anyway, cosecant is also odd. So cosecant of negative theta is negative cosecant to theta. Uh, tangent of negative theta is negative tangent of theta, and cotangent of negative theta is negative cotangent of theta. Okay, okay so that's um, summary of the even and odd properties for the trig functions. So let's actually, we'll do some examples in the uh, next video. Okay.